uh, got fairly humiliated from that one incident. Uh, and I made it no no secret, uh, you know, how I felt about it. And I think that when Russo came in, when Russo first came in, do you want me to go there? Yeah, yeah that's two questions away anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right. All right. When Vince Russo first came into WCW, I, uh, he'd been there maybe three, four weeks, and I was called to come in, and I was in the dressing room, and there's a knock, and hi, how are you, come on in, and my name's Ed Fer Ferreira, or something like that, uh, and he's got some pages in the hand, and he says, I work with Vince Russo. Oh, I says, I says, and he says, here's your interview. I look at it, and it's got, it's got some profanity on it. And on, on screen, I don't use profanity. I think it's a lack of talent. I said, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't use profanity. And I hardly know what I'm going to say anyway, because I can't remember it. And he goes, well, you know, I says, you know, you guys you guys worked uh, for two years writing for McMahon, didn't you? He says, yeah. It's because I know what's going on. I know Russo's, you know, doing a power play here. I'll be damned, he says, you know. In my interviews, uh, you know, I don't usually tell people, you're thick-skinned, are you? Oh, thick skin. They said everything they can about us, you know. Well, uh, that's good. All right. Well, I'll see if I can get... Well, what are you going to say? I don't even say What are you going to say? Well, I said, well, you guys were writing for two years in New York, and you must be the motherfucker that killed my cousin Owen Hart. A sweat, I swear. Beads, a bead of sweat went pow! Right there, within... Try not to exaggerate. Three minutes, Bush, Russo, this kid, Sullivan... Sorry. Please don't say this. Uh, oh, I have your attention now, do I, Russo? Uh, okay. Now, there's shit you're going to be able to do about it because we have a rule. When I'm in the ring and the light's on, I don't give a fuck what you told me. I'm the boss. Or would you like to get along? He's sitting there and he starts trying to water this interview down. He's being clever. And, well, maybe you could just say, I wasn't going to say it anyway. I love my cousin. Uh, and I had called Brett after I told him. Uh, that's how I got off to start with Russo. Then there was a spot where Russo, they, he wanted to go toe-to-toe -to -toe a little bit. And we were starting, all right, here we go, boom. And Cam was just cut, and he was just about to say something about my family. And we have a very strong rule about that. Uh, like with Ric Flair, if you were doing an interview, you'd always say, you know why... Uh, why does Ric Flair date two girls at the same time? That way, when he falls asleep, they got someone to talk to. <laughs> uh, but you never put him in context of his family. And this little snake was about, and they cut, and I cut it, and he, and he got out of that. And from there, I was gone, and Russo was trying to do his thing with Nash, with under the uh, idea that the new wrestling sh should be what they're putting on whatever that was and you know Russo had come down on Hogan and a lot of other people and I didn't like the guy and I saw what McMahon was doing at that time that was necrophilia I'm going guys you're dying and then I see Russo uh, I'm in Nashville as well I was in Nashville I had the TV on and some guy's got like a woolly lamb sheep thing on takes it off and it's Russo and a guy brought me a tape that was it. And, uh, and it was Russo. And, and so I called the, the people there and I said, listen, would you just give me five minutes to talk your show? I won't. Uh, but my bottom line is, if you guys don't turn the shit around, we're all going to go back to territories and we're all going to be dying. And these young guys come up. They gave me the five minutes. I was in his van. I waited. I should rent a van. Both of them were there. I waited outside. Nobody knew. The idea of putting my music on was asked two minutes maybe before and I said well yeah it's a surprise but you want to hit the music you know we're just talking a little production to get into yeah you want to hit the music here now when they hit the music Mike Tanay who knew nothing when well who, who could that be now people right away said well who do you think it is it's very much but if you look at Mike Tanay as the announcer and how Helter Skelter that was, of course, he thought, but what if he had said that as the announcer? And it wasn't. He sincerely didn't know. 
So, but people went right on, well, who did you think it was? It ended up to be me, but you go in that position. And what if you, oh, here comes Piper and it's Sky Logo. <laughs> you know, you look pretty stupid. So, um, they right away jumped on, oh, well, everybody knew. It's a lie. Uh, I walked in to the ring, uh, and uh, Jeff Jarrett came and got one of his time. <laughs> and I started cutting this interview mostly for my, my frat brothers, mostly for the guys who screwed around, and I think it needed to, the statement needed to be made. I'm cutting it, and you're in the room with me. You're in the room with me. And, you know, whatever the camera's hard, I think car camera's here. And I, went, and I don't know, I just turn around, and then there's Vince Russo in the, standing in the corner, kind of with his feet kind of crossed in a real smug kind of way. I just, well, you know, hi, I was just talking about you funny gears are in. And I came right up to him. I'm that far from his nose. He's against the turnbuckle. And I'm going, I, I, I'm not going to let you get away with this. So this I, is a total shoot at the time. I, get, I swear to God, this is a complete shoot. Uh, let me say this. Completely unscripted. Well, uh, the definition of shoot can vary. Right. If I swear I mean, to God. I mean, did you know he was going to come into the ring? Not, uh, uh, not one iota. Not one iota. And when he hit the ring, because like, I don't know where to go now. And as I back him up, I'm here. There ain't no place to go. So I got the mic and I says, yeah, same statement. So are you the guy that killed my cousin? He just puts his head down. I'm thinking to myself, you know, Rod, quick, quick. Rod, back off. And try. I said, okay, wait, wait a second. Let me try something here. Let me be fair about this. What exactly, now we're still here, what exactly are you trying to accomplish with your profanity of involved? Head down like that. Finally he goes, you're a moron, sister. I can't believe it. So I slapped him upside his head with my butt. I went, boom, upside his head. Okay, I guess you don't want to fight. Now, as soon as I did that, these two Harris guy brothers came to the ring. I'm going, okay, here we go. As they come by, they say, hi, Mr. Piper. Trying to say, we don't know either. You know, we're just completely honest. We're just passing through. Now they get Russo. What I don't understand here is Piper's Pit 101. Never let go of the microphone. Vince Russo was trying to, he was blocking because he wanted to take the mic. Are you out of your mind? If you're going to take the mic, go, eh, and take the mic with you. So, I've done a few Piper Pits. So, I, no, you want to talk, talk. Now when the Harris twins come, all of a sudden he starts fighting like he's trying to get to me. All right, wait a second. I just slapped you upside the head an inch from your nose. And I put the mic up, and I realized he had real, real anger. And he tried to grab that microphone. I got a grip from hell from carrying bags through airports. <laughs> and so I got into a kind of, how do you like to be fucked with? And now, uh, here you go, and you know what? You're really not that good, because in five minutes, I've taken everything you've got and just turned it around, and you're dead. See you later, boom. And it became a, a uh, almost sticking up for all the guys you jacked around, and you think you're good? Let's find out. And it just happened the way it happened. They asked me to come back and uh, work an angle. Um... And I said, no. Biggest reason being, number one, I can't trust Vince Russo. Number two, if I come back to wrestle Russo or something, uh, I'm going to have to take him out. I mean, I, I can't work a program. I've got my Jimmy Hart, a uh, good friend of mine. He said, I can't believe it. But no, nobody would believe me that I was just passing through. I couldn't do the angle, and I, and, I, and I never did it. Um, what did they want you to do? They wanted me to come and uh, work the pay-per-view with Russo, whether it be wrestling Russo, bring in Mr. T, uh, Russo in his corner, you know, Russo, Russo, that kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is, the reason I came there was for that cancer Russo to get him out. And there's, you know, that purest kind of thing that the guy has. It. And it turned into that, and nobody would believe it, and only time can, can tell that kind of thing. Uh, it was a shoot. Do you feel that uh, NWA TNA can make it? Do you think they? 
I think that they would have a hell of a chance of making it if they could just get... I don't understand... I understand that Russo's behind the scenes now. What I can understand is um, the language used to a, a lady at ringside, uh, you know, just a little respect, but to get the point across, you know, you're, you're nothing but a whore. You know. I don't see what... What are you doing? What are you selling? What are you... Are you shot? Are you going to make it? You're small, and you're doing this kind of... And I'm a dad, and I got my... What are you doing? And I talked to Jeff, and I talked to Jerry, and I says, you know, it, it, it can only go... I, I got to fuck them up for my rep, or I can't do it. And they came back well, and said, well, I hope you'll be professional about it. And I says... Uh, Gentlemen. And I shot another interview in there from WB32, right. just trying to get some kids in there. And that was just to establish them. And I just says, I can't do it. Reason being that he messed around too many of my friends, and uh, they're more important to me.